Thanks for coming to see me. Very kind of you. So yeah, it's, that's true. I'm Bruce Sterling. Science fiction writer, technology writer, sometime art critic. Um, and I'm talking about the art and artificial intelligence today because it's a trendy topic. And this is how trendy it is. This is Matt Turk. Matt Turk is a well-known uh, business journalist. He's a uh, venture capital analyst. And this is his map for 2019, data and AI landscape of this year. This is basically every company in the world that thinks artificial intelligence is trendy and all the sectors that they're in. And so you can see there's just absolutely a ton. I mean, just it's a big mess are all over the place. So, you know, what does that mean to us in the art world? Well, if you're gonna have some artificial intelligence around, artists are gonna use it to make art. And then somebody has to decide whether to put it on display. So you're gonna need some artificial intelligence art critics. And what are they gonna look like? Well, they're gonna look pretty much like this. This is the Jury of Share Festival in Torino in Italy. And Share Festival is basically a small and very Italian version of Transmediala in Berlin, if you've ever been to Transmediala, which we love. So here we are sitting around in our office in the factory, which is kind of like your factory here, uh, trying to figure out the entries for Share Festival and you know what we're gonna do about it. And in Share Festival, we're also very keen on the means of production for technology art because Turin is an industrial city. So we like to collect tools and understand how this art is made and kind of evangelize it. We even distribute tools to our artists. We're kind of well known for that. We kind of give away things in bags. We collect tools. We're very keen on that. And it's becoming trendy in the art world. This is the House of Electronic Art in Basel. H3K, as they like to call themselves, they're having their little art, having a, a show which is all on artificial intelligence. And here they are doing some very nice uh, style transfer and kind of deep dream stuff in their beautiful German museum, German speaking museum up there in Switzerland. So it's kind of hopping. So here we are doing our most recent show, and we bring over Casey Rees of Processing, who is. MIT graduate, currently a uh, professor of art at uh, University of California, Los Angeles. So Casey was one of our guests and he came over and he's showing some of his work and doing artificial intelligent video. So D Professor Rees is about to publish a book, comes out in September, which is all about doing artificial intelligent video, kind of transforming and and he's a op very famous open source advocate. He's one of the inventors, founders of the processing language. So we, we did, had a panel, we had some discussions with him. Yeah, we can see it's coming. And just, we're gonna be seeing a lot of this at Share Festival. So how do we get ahead of the curve a little bit and try to anticipate what artificial intelligent art is gonna be like and what's gonna be good? Okay, well, here's what people call artificial intelligence. And it's a whole bunch of very different stuff. I mean, it's all got the same name, but it's not hard. The hardware is not similar. The applications aren't similar. Some of it's really old. Some of it's really new. Uh, you know, and some of it has easy art applications, and some of it is just like industrial stuff. Here's a bunch of guys who are doing startup work, and you know, they tend to be doing new things. So if you follow the startup field, you're going to find guys who are trying stuff nobody's ever done before. And this is the startup world, so nine out of 10 of these guys will be dead in four or five years. I mean, some of them are gonna be doing stuff that's genuinely new, and a lot of them are just kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall, and they're doomed. But that's the startup scene, and yeah, we would watch that. I mean, it's, it's a good place to, to look. Is there are certain areas where you know there's gonna be a lot of art applications, and computer vision is one of them, because this is the basically the artificial intelligence world's version of what used to be called new media. So if you're like a guy who used to be into new media 20 years ago and you're trying to get into AI, you're basically gonna be doing something in computer vision. And this is a hopping scene, and you can tell because there's already a lot of scandals. A lot of scandals and controversies in computer vision, including face scanning, which is now illegal in several American cities, including San Francisco can't even do it in, in Silicon Valley. The, the city council won't let you. Uh, there's also Chinese face scanning, which the Americans are extremely upset about and 
threatening to put Chinese companies on some kind of trade war list. There was a great scandal this month called Deep Nude, where some guy tried to use, a German guy actually, or at least a guy in Germany, tried to invent a, uh, a computer vision application that will strip women's clothes off and show you their naked bodies under their clothes. And of course, that just caused tremendous uproar, and he was shut down within a week. And then there's the business of deep fake videos, which is all over Facebook and all over social media, and that comes out of this world. And it's got the heavies, it's got the new people, it's got a ton of money, it's got political controversy, it's got everything you would want to like fertilize art interventions. So we just know they're gonna show up. And what are they gonna do with it? Well, you know, they're gonna be doing a lot of open source stuff because artists like open source. A lot of them come out of the academy. People in universities like open source. So if you wanna try and figure out what's going on, you wanna like, look at this, kinda of like see where it's going. Non-commercial applications. You're gonna be seeing tons of Scala, tons of Python. There they are. I mean, those, those, those are the usual suspects here. Okay, neural nets are especially arty. I mean, a lot of the art applications that are already here are, are various kinds of neural nets, convolutional, uh, generative, adversarial, and so forth. Unfortunately, there's not just kind of one, or maybe fortunately, there's actually all different kinds of ways to make them. And just tons of different ones. Some are artier than others, some you can use for sound, some sound processing, visual processing, they're all better in different ways. They're not well understood. People are still experimenting with them. But there are a few little applications that are showing up that where people have kind of worked the bugs out and they've gotten them to work. This is a thing online called GAN Breeder, which recently changed its name to Art Breeder. And GAN Breeder seems to be getting some traction with the population. It's got a lot of people messing with it. Not artists, but just, you know, it's a toy kind of online web toy, but, but an attractive one. This is Pix2Pix, which is using generative adversarial networks. It's using the technique called style transfer, which has become kind of sexy. You can see it, it has the ability to take this abstract schematic and just paint an, uh, an imaginary building on it that looks, I mean, it's a deep fake building, right? And, I mean, and it's got your regular pull down menu and it looks like a fairly conventional piece of art or graphic arts processing software. Pix to Pix, really interesting. Here's NVIDIA, they make chips, and, but they have this capacity to do web, I mean, uh, uh, neural net based stuff. So they're trying to encourage artists to pick up their hardware and use it. So they've got like the NVIDIA AI playground where you can like go onto the web and like see what NVIDIA's hardware can do and you can like make photorealistic stuff using neural nets in real time, it looks point, click, chip, fairly conventional looking thing. Here's Google, which is one of the first inventors of inceptionism, which you know, surprised me very much. I mean, this, is, this was four years ago, but what, what they did there that was of interest was that basically they were building a system to recognize images, and then they just ran it in reverse and used it to generate images. And the effect was hallucinogenic. I mean, it was just called Deep Dream, and it was very psychedelic and attracted a lot of attention at the time. But it was kind of, it was kind of a gimmick. People didn't understand what was going on. But with four years going by, they actually do know what's going on, and people are starting to like get more of a grip on this technology. Here's some guys who came out like last month or so with a new beta version of a commercial application where you can train your own AI neural net in the cloud using their service. And they're trying to rent out their services to artists. So to say, come on in here, we're gonna like give you some heavy iron and like really let you do it, kind of like build your own deep dreamer in there. I don't know if it's gonna work, but this is where the trend is going. So you may wonder, you know, why would anybody take a neural net seriously? I mean, like, why is this a big deal? Okay, well, this is a commentator on YouTube, chess commentator, Agad Mator. He's actually a Croatian guy, but he's, he's a pretty good chess commentator. He's got half a million followers. So this is a neural net, which is Google's AlphaZero, playing 
Stockfish, which used to be the most powerful chess engine in the world. Stockfish could annihilate any human player and most other computers very easily. I mean, Stockfish is considered, you know, it was considered a machine that had almost solved chess until AlphaZero showed up uh, and, and simply reinvented chess play all by itself. It had no records of what, uh, of what had been going on before in any way. And it played 12 games against Stockfish, and I watched all of those games. I mean, I'm not a chess master or fan. I mean, I know how the game is played and I can play it. But I, I have to tell you, this game in particular, it, it, it's like watching a cat destroy a mouse the way this neural net annihilates a conventional chess artificial intelligence. It, it's really beautiful. And this is one of the few uh, chess playing robots that humans actually want to watch. I mean, AlphaZero plays chess so well that it's actually pretty and attractive. So here's an artist working in Berlin. This is Dr. Holly Herndon. She's got a degree in computer science from California. She's moved to Berlin to become a techno recording artist, and by golly, is she ever one. So here's her new record, which is called Proto, and one of the musicians is an artificial intelligence she built called Spawn. And I play this record, and it's pretty good. And uh, Holly has been killing it in Barcelona at Sonar 2019. So Holly is a Berlin-based techno musician using artificial intelligence and neural nets who I would take very seriously. It's like, it's happening in your backyard here. Holly's up here making it go. Okay, I happen to be a novelist. And you know, I've spent a lot of time messing with robots doing word processing. Okay, this is a front end for uh, Facebook's OpenAI and it's a text generation system. And you can see that when I write in the words, Bruce Sterling, the science fiction writer, went to Berlin for a text festival, however, the, it simply makes up a science fiction story right on the spot. I mean, because I would use the word science fiction, it knows that the story needs to be about science fiction, and it just starts rambling all about Google Loon and so forth. Really a fascinating text generation system. That's the most sophisticated one I've ever seen. It, can actually, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but it actually talks in genre. And, you know, and I would recommend going on to talktransformer.com. It doesn't speak German, unfortunately. It does speak Italian. I don't know why. But, but this is an amazing, really, kind of demonstration of the power of this technology. All right, what happens when you open the hood? This is like, all right, what, what's, what's, what's really going on? Okay, this. Lots of this, a lot of math. It's mostly statistical math. It's all about likelihoods, probabilities. Does this look like this? Does this seem to be related to this? Okay, if you're going to build one, you better be cozy with this. Otherwise, you're just going to be the end user. But, you know, the guys who know what's going on, they're going to be happy with this. What are you actually going to do? Debug. You, you want to build one in your own lab, you're going to like have a cool idea, and you're going to spend 90% of your time trying to get it to work. I mean, even if you're Holly Herndon. Holly Herndon spent six months trying to get her artificial intelligence to sing. And then it started singing, not very well. Sings pretty good now, but for six months, it's just awful. And like, what goes wrong with it? This kind of stuff. These are just the most common things. I mean, I, I, I'm not a programmer, but I know what programming bugs look like. Okay, these are new kind of bugs. New kind of technology, new kind of bug. God only knows. Good luck with that. <laughs> Here are people who are actually working on the hardware for this. I mean, this is the, I mean, you can forget the companies, forget the startups, just pay attention to the software development platforms, and you usually do pretty well there. And you can see where the manpower is going. It's like what programmers have agreed to spend their time debugging whatever. Okay, this is a debugging race, because it's a super buggy technology. And the more manpower you have with enough eyes, all bugs are shallow. So these are like bugs disappearing in real time, basically. Europeans, yeah. Nobody talks about artificial intelligence being regional, but it's regionalizing pretty fast. Europe's going to regulate AI. You're going to end up with artificial European intelligence. 
Nobody's ever thought that through. But these are European companies, they're all under European regulation, doing all kinds of stuff. Europeans will give you an art grant to do AI art. US probably not gonna do that. There you go. Nice EU flag, Ars Electronica, Linz, World Capital of Electronic Art. They won't give you a ton of money, but at least they'll talk to you. Every government in the world thinks this is some kind of arms race. They're all making nice about it. They're all chattering. Germany, too. Ton of it going on in this country. All kinds. Look at all those applications. They're throwing it in anything that'll move. Here's a plug-in. And this is kind of the end game of my story. I mean, what happens with this revolution? Well, it's super exciting and super weird for five, six, seven years, and then it turns into a plug-in. This is for After Effects, for graphic artists or for musicians or whoever finds an application. And eventually, it turns into a way to make cute cats. Okay, my feeling is that this technology is gonna turn into a way, a way to make cute cats. And you know, eventually it becomes banal. I mean, it's a technical revolution that becomes banal, but our society is actually very good at that. And that's actually a good thing. The banality of cute cats is better than a singularity or a Terminator apocalypse movie. And you know, this is the mess that, that we have to deal with. Uh, but I think Berlin could do a lot with this, really. You've, you are the art capital of the world for a little while. This is a new, trendy thing. People in this room are good at new and trendy. Uh, you've got means, motive, and opportunity to do something. It is something new in the world. It is going to be generally novel, at least for a while. So uh, good luck with that. Give it your best. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. We're gonna do one question from Slido before we let you off stage. A question for a futurist, since you are here representing the futurism. Um, how long are we, how far away are we from being able to have a full movie produced by AI just by inputting the script? I'm sure that's been done already. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, but it would just be a blurry mess and kind of, <laughs> you know, and, and it wouldn't be very appealing. It's like asking how long are you from having a novel written by a computer. There are hundreds of novels written by computers. It just none of them are any good. <laughs> Excellent. Right. Thank you so much, Bruce. Sure. <laughs>